So we're going to cover chart properties. And again, as I mentioned, it's, it's what's displayed on the screen, what voltage channels, what current channels. You can change any parameter that's, re that's recorded by the instruments. So maybe if you volts, amps, watts, VA, VARs, power factor, THD, other harmonics, symmetrical components. So basically the chart properties are what's displayed on the screen. And that's directly related to what the instrument has recorded and or what maybe DRANview has computed from that data. So you have the ability to turn them on or off individually, but you can also look at the appearance of what is displayed. Um, so what the colors are, um, different things about plotting, and we're gonna talk about the appearance uh, in our next module that'll come right after this. So for chart properties, and let me just uh, turn off the zoom tool here. Uh, chart properties can be found in several ways. First of all, you can right click on any graph, any pane. First of all, I'll make it the active pane. I right click and you can see properties. So if I uh, select properties, I have the ability to select any channel or any parameter for that. And I'll do the same thing on the timeline. I make that the active pane by single clicking and I go right click and I say properties. Okay, so it'll take a second to come up. And this is basically looking at every event type in the database that we're measuring and giving you individual control to turn on or off what's in that uh, or what's on that display. So if I just move the properties to the right here, you can see I have voltage and current for channel A selected. And you can see I have VA and IA here. Just hypothetically, I'll uncheck um, the current for channel A and say, okay, you could see the current disappears and I only have um, voltage for channel A. So it's really that simple. Again, you can right click and select properties or a nice little tech tip here. I double click on any blank area and I pull up the properties as well. And I could do the same thing on the right pane for the event details. So <clears throat> you have individual control for any uh, parameter that you wanna display as well as you can select groups. So if I click the VRMS title, I can turn on or off any or the whole, the entire group of, of voltage. I can do the same thing for current. I can do the same by channel. So within the subcategory. So I select individually, I can select the whole channels worth of information for all the parameters available. In addition, you can see on the left here, and it's tied to these tabs up at the top, that the data is divided into different categories. And these are measurement categories from the instrument. Again, usually one of our power quality instruments, but of course this could be our, our fairly new DRAN expert instrument as well. You will see this list of, of uh, available parameters be larger and smaller based upon the type of instrument and what was recorded by that instrument. So again, you can only see what's in the instrument database. If there's no parameters of a particular event type, that type uh, will not be displayed here in this chart. So it actively looks for the database to, by event type. So just to give you some information, basic metering um, is basically your volts, your amps and things like that. More advanced metering uh, is maybe DC, some of the 200 millisecond information from the instrument, then you go into energy categories, distortion, which is your basic harmonics. You can look at um, individual harmonic groupings. These are things configured by the instrument. Um, these are the 200 millisecond groups. Uh, these are getting into a little more advanced parameters here, but the point is you can go up or down this list and individually select any part of that that you want. Any individual channel or all of the channels for a particular parameter or any random option that you wish. If you look next to each, you may see this little plus sign. You can expand because there's a lot of information stored by the instrument. And this is all picked up by DRANview. So when you expand this, certainly next to voltage or current, you can see there's multiple options to choose from here. So if I shrink this, I can expand that voltage. I have the value itself. That's what I'm plotting voltage wise. I can also plot what were the high and the low limits. So if I just scoot this over to the right here, and actually let me just cancel this a second and let me unzoom all so we get our full display. Now, just to describe, I have my voltage is being plotted. I have my high limit. I have my low limit. So when we go back to the properties, oops, just bear with me here. We go back to the properties and I expand here. 
you can see I've got my high limit, my low limit, and what the low, low limit is, an inter, it's an interruption threshold that's set up by the instrument. That's usually about 10% of the, uh, the nominal. So I can individually turn any of these on or off. Like as an example, I'm gonna turn off the high limit and the low limit and click okay. Now look over here, you'll see them disappear. You can see they're gone. Those little horizontal uh, things are not in my timeline anymore. So the point being is that you have individual control of what you see within here, okay? Um, the same thing for when you go into other things that have min, max, and average. There's no min, max uh, information here, but you have the ability to control that and they will show up in the database as well. So when I go on the right-hand side, I have the ability to look at the details of what's displayed for events. So this is very important. So I have, when, when the HDPQ family and even um, its generation before it, the, uh, the PX5 family, when it records an event, it has the ability to both record the wave shape and the trends of the event. And that's displayed up on the top and the bottom over here. So if I unzoom this, we can more easily see it. So you can see I have the wave shapes recorded, and this is just a trend of those wave shapes, what the trend of the voltage and the current did. So if I go back to the properties, I have the ability to turn on and off them individually. So I've turned off BNC voltage, and I've turned on channel A current. And you can see here they are right over here. So I have the ability to individually control the wave shapes, as well as the basic metering. The metering are those trends. So if I just only enable channel A for all of those, you can see I have my, my voltage wave shape, my current wave shape, my current trend, which will follow the voltage, and my voltage trend. I'm sorry, this is the, they're backwards. This is the current trend, and this is the voltage trend. And they're following the individual wave shapes that you see. This is just the RMS plotted of the wave shape that you see above there. Everything is linked together, so when you zoom in, and you change um, what you displayed uh, horizontally or vertically, all of these plots are linked together. So I think we covered um, pretty much everything in the uh, first part of the chart properties. Again, this is what you can display in the timelines and the wave shape, or I'm sorry, the event detail windows as far as um, the parameters that you can display. Again, when you're in, in each of these, you can right click and select properties, or you can double click any particular blank area and you will pull up the properties for that as well. And you can individually select them.